My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. It's very important that you go through every single math problem in this book. If there is a problem that gives you trouble, you will find the solution to the problem from day number 251 through 400. We are almost quite done with all the problem in this book. This book contains problems. They are all, all of the problems in this book, almost all of them. Almost all the problem in this book are the exact same problems that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE and in most cases on the same page number. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are actually solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions from this book right here, the general test, the GRE general test, the 10th edition, the old version. Because the other two books that I just showed you simply do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions. So for extra practice, we, we started solving problem from here, from day number 401. We are on page number right now, 200. Please turn to it. Page number 200, the very first problem in the second column, problem number 11. Problem number 11. Problem number 11, when it was given, when it was given, 74% of people had no trouble with it, 3 quarter of people got it right. Here's what we are told. We are told that O is the center, center of the circle. And they give us a circle here, right here is our circle. O is the center. And then we are shown a line PQ that goes like this. PQ and this O is the center. We are told that O is the center. And that plays a crucial role, that information. That information is going to play a crucial role knowing the fact that O actually is the center of the circle. What we're being asked to compare is the length of PQ versus the average of the length of PR and PS. PR is something like this and PS is something like this. So we're being asked to take we're being asked to take the average of these two lengths, PR and PS, the average of these two lengths versus PQ. Now PQ we are told goes through the center. Since PQ goes through the center, since P to Q goes through the center, that implies that PQ, PQ represents the diameter. Diameter. Now if it makes it easy for you, you can just plug in numbers just so that it's easier for us to discuss. Let's pretend the diameter is 10. Let's pretend the radius is 5. The radius is 5, which means P to Q, P to Q is 10. If P to Q is 10, then what does PR, what do PR and PS represent? PR and PS represent core. And a chord of a circle is always shorter than a diameter. Always. That's what a chord is. A chord is something that does not go through a center. It does not go through a center. There's a chord. Here's another chord. Here's one more chord. As long as it does not go through a center, it's not a diameter. It has to go through a center for it to be a diameter, which is the longest distance between two points in the circle. A diameter is the longest possible point on two point, uh, joining the two points in the circle. In order for that to happen, it has to go through a center. So if, if we're going to pretend, this is not given. This five, with this 5 we are plugging in ourselves. It's not given to us. We just plugged in here. If we're going to pretend that the radius of the circle is 5, the diameter from P to Q is 10. If the diameter is 10, then P to R is going to be something less than 10, and P to S is going to be something less than 10. Now what it is, we're not interested in. It doesn't matter what P to R is, it doesn't matter what P to S is. The reason why most people end up picking D for the answer choice here, the reason why most people end up picking D for the answer choice is because they sit there and, and they say to themselves, well, how can I figure out the average of PR and PS? What do they ask themselves? They sit there. They sit there and they ask themselves, how can I possibly figure out the average of PR and PS? And that is exactly their problem. That is exactly their problem because they do not understand what these questions are all about. These questions are called quantitative 
comparison. These are not called quantitative computation, which is why I make a point, which is why I make a point of writing down the word computation, and then I cross it out for emphasis. Nobody is asking us to compute anything. We don't have to figure out, we do not have to figure out what the average of these two chords, what the average length of these two chords is. We simply have to ask ourselves, is the average of these two chords going to be less than, equal to, or more than 10? Well, if this is less than 10, if we have a quantity that is less than 10, and then we have another quantity that is less than 10, and if we were to add those two quantities and take their average, the average of the two quantities where both of them are less than 10, one more time, the average of two quantities, the average of two quantities where both of them are less than 10 is going to be less than 10. The length of this chord, let's put them in a different color here, length of PR and the length of PS, it does not matter what their length are. If you were to take the average of these two lengths, the PS and PR, their le average length is going to be less than 10. It can never be more than 10. It can never be equal to 10. And therefore, 10 is more than something less than 10. The answer is A. Therefore, the length of the diameter, the length of the diameter is always greater, to, is always going to be greater than the average length of no matter how many chords you draw. You can sit there and draw a billion chords in a circle and take their average. The average of all the chords in a given circle is always going to be length less than the length of the diameter. With the chords, by definition, all of them, every single one of them is less than a diameter. So if you, hold, if you add up a whole bunch of numbers where every one of them is less than 10, their average is going to be less than 10. That's all. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 12. Number 12. I don't know if I remember. I don't, I don't remember if I, if I remember. I, I don't recall reminding you to pause the video every time I set up the problem pause the video solve the problem yourself first before you before you watch the solution to the problem okay as soon as I set up the problem pause the video solve it yourself first number 12 number 12 the percentile is 72 percent we have x minus 1 or times x plus 1 versus x squared here's our column a here's our column b and we're being asked to compare the two quantities. Go ahead and do it. Pause the video, solve the problem. I insist that you do that and then compare your work against the work that we're going to do together. You will learn more out of it that way as I always remind you. I'm going to give you two seconds to do just that. So here we go. This is actually very straightforward. This is simply a minus b times a plus b. It's going to be a squared minus b squared or as you can see here it's going to be x times x, which is x squared. x times 1 is going to be x. x times negative 1 is going to be negative x. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is going to be negative 1. It's going to be negative 1. It's very important that we understand that this is negative 1 and not a positive 1. It's going to play a very crucial role in a second. And here we have x squared. Is that all we have, really? Yes, that's all we have. So what happens? We have a positive x and a negative x. Positive x and a negative x is going to drop out. You may end up with x squared minus 1 versus x squared. Let's subtract x squared from both sides. If we subtract x squared from both sides, x squared drops out. Or if you like, we can actually do it out if you, if you insist on doing it like a baby. If you insist on doing it like a baby, we can do it. It, it drops out and we end up with a negative 1. And here we end up x squared minus x squared. What do we end up here? We end up with a big fat 0. That's it, we are done. Which one is bigger? Zero or negative one? Of course negative one is smaller. Of course zero is bigger. The answer is B. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.